Hi there, and welcome to another Random Facts episode. So, to this week, because it is the 4th of July and Independence Day in the United States, I thought that that would be my topic. So let's get started on those facts. An Independence Day, in case those of you who might not know, is actually an annual event commemorating the anniversary of a nation's independence, or statehood usually after ceasing to be a group or part of another nation or state. More rarely after the end of a military occupation, most countries observe their own respective independence days as national holidays. Now there's also something called a national day, which is a designated date on which celebrates um, the nationhood or the nation or non-sovereign country. And this nationhood can be symbolized by the date of independence of becoming a republic or a significant date for a patron saint or a ruler, such as a birthday, a session, removal, etc. Uh, often this day is not called National Day, but serves as one and can be considered as one. Um, and then the National Day will often be a national holiday, and many countries have more than one. The Declaration of Independence was meant to justify a revolt against the British with a list of charges against the British think British king. And believe it or not, the 4th of July holiday in the States is actually not to celebrate the signing of the Declaration, it celebrates the adoption of the Declaration of Independence by the Second Continental Congress. It was initially adopted by the Congress on July 2nd, 1776. The revised version of the Declaration of Independence was not adopted until two days later. In a, this day is actually important enough to the forefathers that in a letter to his wife Abigail, dated on July 3rd, 1776, John Adams made a prediction that the second day of July would be celebrated as American Independence Day since the Congress had actually voted to sever ties with Great Britain the day before, being the second but they didn't start signing it until the 4th. Eight of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were born in Britain. Seven of the signers, which is one-eighth of the signers of the Declaration, uh, actually were educated at Harvard University. It goes to show you how long that university has been around. Um, three U.S. presidents, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe, died on July 4th. Adams and Jefferson within hours of each other in 1826, while Monroe died in 1831. The back of the original Declaration of Independence actually has written on the back, Original Declaration of Independence dated 4th July 1776. Unfortunately, the original Declaration of Independence was lost. However, this year in Britain they actually found a rare copy that was from the same time period. It was probably the copy that was sent to England to represent the severing of their ties. So that was really interesting news this year. Uh, both the Philippines and Rwanda celebrate July 4th as a day of liberation. In Southeast Asia it is known as Republic Day and Rwandans celebrate Liberation Day. Obviously, we're not the only country who has an Independence Day, and believe it or not, we're not the first. We're actually the fifth to declare independence from another nation. So, I thought I would share with you just the ones that are in July that share our month of Independence, of Independence Days and National Days. So, to start off, we just had it recently. It was Canada Day, and that happened July 1st, 1867. They were granted nominal independence from UK, and it's known as Dominion Day prior to 1982. Also on July 1st is Somalia in 1960. The Union of the Trust Territory of Somalia, which used to be the Italian Somaliland, and British Somaliland to ended up joining to form the Somali Republic. Burundi is another July 1st. There's a lot of July 1sts here. Uh, in 1962, they declared independence from Belgium, as did Rwanda on that same day and same year. Then we have Belarus on July 3rd of 1944. The liberation of Minsk is what marked theirs after several years of German occupation. There's that military coup that we were talking about earlier. Uh, Venezuela in, on July 5th of 1811 declared 
declared independence from Spain. Uh, Algeria is next in 1962 on July 5th, independence from France. And the last July 5th one I have is Cape Verde, which declared their independence from Portugal. There's a lot of them here, <laughs> so hopefully you'll be patient with me. Uh, Malawi on July 6th of 1964 declared their independence from the UK. Comoros, July 6th, 1975, independence from France. Um, Solomon Islands on July 7th, independence from the UK. Argentina, independence declared from the Spanish Empire. Uh, South Sudan, and those are both, South Sudan and Argentina are both July 9th. Um, but South Sudan was two, 2011, and they declared their independence from Sudan. And that's the most recent country that I found that has declared independence in my research. Now we're up to the Bahamas. In, on July 10th, 1973, they declared their independence from the UK. Sao Tome and Principe, independence from Portugal, um, July 12th for that one. Kiribati, 1979, independence from the United Kingdom, also the 12th. France, this one is officially considered a national day. I was surprised that it wasn't listed as one of the independence days, but they celebrate on the 14th of July from this goes back to 1789. It was the day that they stormed the Bastille, and that was considered a turning point in the French Revolutionary War. So they actually called their day Bastille Day. Now, July 17th of 1992 has Slovakia, and they declare their independence in 1992 only as a Remembrance Day. And de jure independence came on January 1st, 1993, after the division of Czechoslovakia, which is considered a public holiday. Colombia, on July 20th, 1810, and August 7th, 1819, they declared independence from Spain. Um, it was declared in 1810, but then it wasn't recognized until 1819. Belgium, July 21st, 1831, independence from the United Netherlands. Belgian Revolution um, is what happened on October 4th, 1830, and then Leopold of Saxe-Coburg-Salfield took the oath as first king of the Belgians in, on July 21st, 1831. Liberia, July 26th, 1847, independence from the American Colonization Society. Yes, we did colonize places too. It wasn't just the UK and the European countries. Um, Maldives, on July 26th, 1965, independence from the UK. Peru, July 28th, 1821 independence from Spain and that day is called Fiesta Petrias. That was the last one. So I'm through that list for you. Uh, now for our Independence Day, what I thought was interesting was the, the Pennsylvania Evening Post was the first newspaper to print the declaration in full on July 6, 1776. The first Independence Day celebration in the States took place in Philadelphia on July 8th of 1776, and this was also the day that the Declaration of Independence was first read in public after people were summoned by the ringing of the Liberty Bell. And really, Americans started observing the 4th of July as early as 1777, when the first ever major celebration in Philadelphia included a parade and a 13-shot cannon salute and fireworks. Gotta have those fireworks, right? The White House held its first 4th of July party in 1801, which was 25 years after the Declaration of Independence was adopted. Now, fireworks, I feel conflicted about it these days, um, just because not only pets get scared, but I know there are people who deal with PTSD, yet they're really cool to watch. I feel conflicted about their use. However, it is one of our tr many traditions for the 4th of July. So, since they are a tradition of this national holiday, the U.S. imported $227.3 million worth of fireworks from China in 2012. US, the U.S. exports of fireworks, by comparison, came to just $11.7 million in 2012, with Israel purchasing more than any other country at $2.5 million of our fireworks. That makes me curious as to why? Um, but there it is. <laughs> the American Pyrotechnics Association 
estimates that more than 14,000 professional firework displays light up the skies in the United States each 4th of July. Now, inside each handmade firework are small packets filled with special chemicals, mainly metal salts and metal oxides, which react to produce an array of colors. Each element releases a different amount of energy, partially due to the chemistry that it makes up when it's ignited. Each element has a different amount of energy that it gives off, and thus emits a different color. And the energy is what determines the color or wavelength of the light that is emitted. Let's go back to Roy G. Bibb. <laughs> and if you guys don't know that, look it up. It's, it's great. So some of the elements used, for example, for blue, it includes varying amounts of copper chloride compounds. Red includes strontium and lithium salts, but just like you do with painting or coloring, when you mix the two colors together, that's how you get the secondary colors, such as purple. So there's a mixture of both of those chemicals in the packets to make the purple ones. Barbecues are also big on Independence Day. Approximately 150 million hot dogs and 700 million pounds of chicken are consumed on this day. Hopefully they have enough coal. <laughs> the stars on the original American flag were in a circle so all the colonies would appear equal. I like that idea, considering we're supposed to be based on equality here. Um, 59 places in the U.S. contain the word liberty in the name. Pennsylvania with 11 has more of these places than any other state. And of the 59 places nationwide containing liberty in the name, four are counties. Liberty County, Georgia, Liberty County, Florida, Liberty County, Montana, and Liberty County, Texas. Now, the most common patriotic sounding word used within place names is union with 136. Pennsylvania, again, has the most of these locations with 33. Other words most commonly used in place of names are Washington at 127, Franklin at 118, Jackson at 96, and Lincoln at 95. Now we're going to get to some fun music facts. <laughs> so I know that a lot of you out there probably know the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. Uh, most of us learn in elementary school in the States at least. Well apparently it was originally sung by British military officers prior to the revolution as a means to mock the disorganized American colonists who fought alongside them during the French and Indian Wars. So maybe we don't want to, I don't know if we're taking it and trying to make it ours and pull strength from it or if we're really just making fun of ourselves as a result. The Star Spangled Banner, known as our national anthem, was written by Francis Scott Key during the War of 1812 and did not and not decreed the official national anthem of the United States until 1931. Now at one point there was talk about Irving Berlin's God Bless America being used to be a national anthem, but there was some kickback partially because he was a Jewish immigrant. But it is another classic song. The tune that of the national anthem also known as the Star Spangled Banner, was originally used by an English drinking song called To Anacreon in Heaven. The words have nothing to do with consumption of alcohol, but the melody that Francis Key had in mind when he wrote these, those words did originate decades earlier as the melody for a song, Praise of Wine. The musical, 1776, yes, there is a musical all about our Declaration of Independence out there. Uh, it premiered on Broadway in 1969 and ran for 1,217 performances. The production won three Tony Awards, including one for Best Musical. And I do know it was revised later. I don't remember the year on that one, though. But still, and it's pretty fun music. Two of our nation's most notable national symbols were made overseas. The Liberty Bell was cast in England, which was news to me. And the Statue of Liberty was made in France. It's believed that the uh, artist who made the Statue of Liberty, the story goes that the face is based on his mother, but there are rumors apparently from the French that it was actually based on someone else. Um, Calvin Coolidge, our 30th president, was born July 4th of 1872. And other notable births include Malia Obama, George Steinbrenner, Neil Simon, and Ron Kovic. 
The following events also occurred on the 4th of July. Henry David Thoreau moved into a shack on Walden Pond in 1845. The U.S. air offensive against, the Nazi, Ger against Nazi Germany began in 1942. The Beach Boys, good summer music for you, the song I Get Around reached number one on the Billboard charts in 1964, and Lyndon Johnson signed the Freedom of Information Act in 1966. Hopefully I was able to give you some information that you might not have known before. I hope you enjoyed it, even though I know I had a long list of other nations with Independence Days and National Days during July. But hopefully you'll continue to join me for my videos and check them out on Mary Parker, Mary Parker. Subscribe below, comment, like, etc. All those fun things. And I hope you're having a great holiday, a safe holiday. Be respectful of each other and don't drink and drive, of course. <laughs> And please, be kind to each other. Bye.